Guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is Patrick Lohman, and I'm one of the pastors here at Denver Baptist Church. I'm pastor over discipleship and community outreach. This one's going to be called DBC Engage, and basically, uh, what we're going to cover is apologetic issues. We're going to cover, cover uh, culture issues, um, apologetics, some theology here and there. Uh, theology goes along with our apologetics, so it'll be there. But how do we as Christians engage uh, the community and the culture around us? So. Like I said, a lot of it's going to be focused on apologetics, and this week, this first podcast, I just want to kind of engage um, on apologetics and open up by saying, what is apologetics? Answering a few questions. It's not going to be very long. It's not going to be real in-depth. It's just an introduction uh, to Christian apologetics. So first of all, maybe you've heard the term apologetics. Um, maybe this is the first time you've heard it. And maybe as soon as you hear it, you say, why are we as Christians apologizing for anything? I don't have anything to apologize for. Um, Well, that's not what apologetics is. So what is apologetics? Apologetics, uh, you might know, comes from the Greek word apologia, and it basically means to give a defense. So as apologists, as Christians, we are to give a defense uh, for why we believe what we believe. And so let me just cover a couple verses right quick to kind of set the groundwork of what apologetics is, and it'll maybe help you to understand from a biblical, uh, biblical perspective a little bit better of um, what this word means. So the first one is a, um, it's mainly the, the key New Testament verse for Christian apologetics. It comes from 1 Peter 3.15. Peter says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense or an apologia, to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. But Peter says, yet do it with gentleness and respect. So Peter says that we're always to be prepared to give an apologetic, an apologia, or a defense um, for why we believe that Christianity is true. A couple more that I want to give to you right quick um, to kind of understand apologetics better. Um, Paul, before the crowd there in Acts 22.1, says this, Brothers and fathers... Hear the defense, or the apologia, hear the defense that I now make before you. Also, Acts 25, 16, uh, I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before accused, before the accused met the accuser face to face and had the opportunity to make his defense or as an apologetic, his apologia concerning the charges laid against him. 1 Corinthians 9, 3, uh, this is my defense, this is my apologia. To those who would examine me. Philippians 1 7, it is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both of in my imprisonment and in the defense or the apologia and confirmation of the gospel. Two more I want to share with you. Philippians 1:16. Um, the latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense, the apology, apologia of the gospel. And finally, 2 Timothy 4.16, uh, at my first defense, or at my first apologia, Paul says, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. So Christian apologetics is basically just given a defense for why we believe Christianity is true. Um, and we're to engage in apologetics. The Bible tells us to always be prepared to make a defense for the truths of Christianity. And so that's what this podcast, this vodcast, this videocast is going to do. We're going to just engage many different topics in apologetics and hopefully prepare you um, to be better equipped uh, to engage the culture. So let me just cover a couple goals of apologetics. Um, What's some goals in apologetics? Let me cover the first thing, what we're not trying to do in apologetics. What we're not trying to do, I'm going to give three different things we're not trying to do. First, we're not just trying to show people how much we know. Oftentimes when we learn new things or we learn new theology or learn new things in apologetics, you can see folks that um, 
It's their goal just to let the world know just how much they know about those things. And so that's not the goal of apologetics. Enjoy the knowledge, uh, but use the knowledge for gospel engagement. So first, we're not trying to show people how much we know. Um, Second, we're not trying to bash somebody's worldview. Too often, too, we can see folks that maybe you see this on Facebook, maybe you see this on um, Twitter or um, social media, or you've seen it in in life, that somebody, uh, maybe a Christian, uh, is engaging with a non-believer, and what they're doing is just bashing their worldview. And what this does, it just builds a wall between the Christian and the non-believer, and it does nothing um, for gospel engagement. So we're not trying to show people how much we know. We're not there to just bash somebody's worldview. Remember that Peter said that we're supposed to always be ready to give a defense, and this defense is to be with gentleness and respect. We're to show this in love. Um, so we're not trying to show much we know. We're not trying to bash somebody's worldview. Number three, we're not there just to win an argument. We're there to win people to, uh, to Christ. So we're not just trying to win the argument. Uh, you may often have seen people engaged in discussions about Christianity and other religions or other worldviews, and the person that's trying to uh, uh, engage is only there trying to win the argument. They already know what they're going to say next. They're not listening. They're not hearing people out. Um, so they're there just to win the argument. That's not what we're trying to do in apologetics. So what are we trying to do in a Christian um, in Christian apologetics? Where we're there to give a credible defense for the Christian faith. Um, we have to remember that the Bible teaches us that everyone conceived, everyone that's ever been conceived, will either end up in heaven or hell. And so we need to remember this in our culture engagements. Um, we need to keep in mind God's justice. We need to keep in mind that everyone is created in the image of God and are therefore sinners needing a Savior because of the fall, that everyone is in need of a Savior. So we're there to remember that, you know what, this person that I'm talking to one day will, will end up in heaven or hell, and God's got them in my life for a reason to engage uh, them with gentleness and respect. Uh, but also speaking the truth. Um, What else are we trying to do? We have to remember that that when we're talking to people, they may be hostile. They may be hostile. They may be angry. They may not like what we're having to say. But as I mentioned, they're made in the image of God. And so we need to remember these things, that we're not trying to just answer a a question, but there's somebody behind that question who has a soul uh, who is in need of a Savior. So remember what Peter says, to do this with gentleness and respect. And number three, what we're trying to do, we need to remember to never compromise what is taught in Scripture. So I have the Bible open here. I have it open to, to the um, 1 Peter 3.15. We need to always remember that when we're engaging in apologetic stuff, we, we can't compromise the truth. Um, the Word is truth, and so we need to rest on that at the end of the day. So, um, so when we engage in apologetics, uh, let's remember that we're not trying to win an argument. Uh, there's souls that we're talking to. Um, there's people there that need Jesus. Um, we need to also remember not to be argumentative. I like what William Lane Craig says in his book, On Guard. Craig says this, that um, we can present a defense of the Christian faith without becoming defensive. We can present arguments for Christianity without becoming argumentative. If you have good arguments in support of your faith, you're less apt to become quarrelsome or upset. Craig says that I find the better that uh, I find that the better my arguments, the less argumentative I am. The better my defense, the less defensive I am. So, Christian, it's our job to be prepared to give a defense. Maybe you remember by having a debate with somebody, and you can get argumentative at times. Why do we get argumentative? A lot of times we get argumentative and kind of defensive because we're not prepared and we don't have the the kind of tools we need to engage. And so if you do the work now, before you get into those engagements, um, it can pay great dividends. Um, So in this podcast, this uh, video cast, we're going to be looking at how to give a defense for the Christian faith, how to engage in apologetics. Um, And as I mentioned, we need to prepare now so that we can um, be prepared uh, in, when, when the situation arises. I remember uh, many years back now, um, I've, I've told this story to several people that um, so Jehovah Witnesses showed up at my door and um, opened the door, had some conversations with them, but I clearly was not ready um, for the stuff they was throwing my way. 
And I tell, I tell people that, hey, I got my lunch money stolen that day. They, they ran me through the ringers. And I said, um, that's never going to happen again. One, my ego was hurt. My pride was hurt. But two, I felt that I let down um, the God of Scripture. I, I was not prepared in that moment to give a defense. And so from that time on, um, I've tried to be diligent about um, knowing why I believe what I believe in Scripture, um, being prepared to give a defense for the hope that's in me. And it's the Lord has, um, has blessed me in, in, in some good conversations that I've had. We need to remember that it's not our arguments, though. We need to remember that it's through prayer and the Holy Spirit that's working on the unbeliever's life that they ultimately come to Christ. But nevertheless, we as Christians need to be uh, prepared. If I asked you, um, changing gears a little bit, if I asked you this question, um, what are three main reasons that you don't engage in evangelism? And if you thought about that for a little while, what's three main reasons you don't engage in evangelism? I imagine that one of the answers would be that you don't feel equipped. That maybe if you're involved in gospel conversation, somebody's going to bring up a question that you're not able to answer. And so that might be you. Um, maybe you don't feel equipped. Um, I hope this, this, um, this little video cast, this podcast will, will be helpful. I hope it will equip you. I hope you'll be um, better equipped as you stick with me throughout the, uh, throughout the, the episodes to come. Um, there's, it's, it takes a while to, to kind of, lay out all these things but as the as the different episodes come we'll, we'll work through some different um stuff about apologetics and hopefully you'll be better equipped in the long run um so i want to answer another question um briefly uh with you before we cut out of here um i want to ask the question why apologetics why apologetics do i really need uh, apologetics in my life and and if so, why do we need apologetics? I'm going to give you seven reasons that I think um, apologetics is important. Uh, you might have seven more on top of this. You might have seven different ones. I, I don't know, but I just kind of was thinking through these things and, and thought, you know, wh why apologetics? The first reason I think that apologetics is important is that in our co uh, current culture context, apologetics is needed today just as much or more than ever before. The culture is growing more and more secular. And that's no shocker. That's no good new news for you. You know that media, arts, education, uh, politics, they're constantly attacking the historic Christian faith. And so I think in our culture now, more than ever, we need to be prepared, as Peter said, to give a defense uh, for the hope that's in us. So we're constantly under attack from the culture. That's number one. Uh, number two, I think apologetics is needed because the church is lacking in what I'll call the defense department. <laughs> the defense department is lacking. The apologetic department, I think, is lacking. Uh, too often Christians just follow the culture. Um, you too often can't tell a Christian apart from those in the culture. And we may just follow because we're not prepared to give a defense. Um, or we don't engage in gospel conversations because we just don't feel equipped. And so I think apologetics is lacking in the church. So I think apologetics is important because we've too often um, left that aside and we've, we've not prepared ourselves. Number three, I think apologetics is needed because our kids are graduating. They're going off to secular universities where the professors would like nothing more than to destroy their Christian faith. So here we are raising kids up in the church. They're going to VBS. They're going to youth group. They're involved in the church. And then we send them out and then we're sending them out into battle without weapons, without ammo, without training, and we're sending them out there. And as a result, we're losing generations of young Christians. And so I think apologetics is important because we need to prepare our kids uh, to go out to make a defense for the gospel. Our youth pastor, Michael, told me a story one time, and I might mess the details up a little bit, but he told me a story about him at, I think he's at UNCG, and um, went to a New Testament class. It was either a New Testament or a Bible class. And at the beginning of that class, the professor asked how many people were in here are Christians and believe, I think, the Bible is the Word of God or something like that. And I think Michael said the vast majority of the class raised their hand. I'm a Christian. I, I believe the Bible is the Word of God. And, um, and he says the vast majority of the class. Um, that whole semester, the professor berates the Christian faith, says the claims of Scripture aren't true, says there's errors in the Bible, on and on and on for a whole semester. At the end of that semester, they asked the same question. And I think Michael said out of this big class, maybe 50 students, that only a handful of them raised their hand that they're still Christians at the end of the, of the semester. Same question we asked in the semester, how many are still Christians? 
just a few raised their hand. And so what happened? Over one semester, a professor who didn't, was not a Christian uh, was able to deconstruct um, the Christian faith for all these kids. And it's happening at universities all over the U.S. Um, the famous New Testament critic, um, Bart Ehrman, uh, does not believe the Bible is the Word of God. He's at UNC Chapel Hill, and he has full classes each semester. And all he does the whole semester is show how he believes the Bible is not the Word of God. So we're raising Christian, uh, Christian kids up, sending them off to universities, and they're losing their faith. They're raised up in the church, and they have no defense to give. So I think apologetics is important for the next generation, for raising up kids for the next generation. That's number three. Number four, I think apologetics is needed uh, for church members also of all ages um, to answer the many different attacks that come against the Christian faith. So it don't matter if you're in high school, middle school, elementary school, or if you're a senior adult, or if you're in your midlife, all in between, there's constant attacks that come against the Christian faith. So I think apologetics is important to um, push back against these attacks, to give a defense. These may be attacks such as there's no credible evidence for God. Science can tell us everything we need to know. Why do you need a God? Um, maybe the question of if there's a good and loving God, why is there evil in the world? You know, why did my parents get cancer? Or why, my, why did my parents get cancer? Why, why did my kid have to go through this? Um, why are there wars? Why, why is there famines? If there's a good God, why, does, why is there evil in the world? Um, or they may say, you know, the Bible is just full of errors and contradictions. Um, or they may say that when someone's dead, they remain dead, and therefore Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Science tells us that. Um, or maybe they say that why are you as Christians believe that you have the only right religion? Why is Christianity the only way back to God? So I think that apologetics is important for all members of the church to give a defense for some of these questions. That's just a, just a few questions that are, are um, accusations they might throw against the church. Um, and we need to be prepared to give a defense for that. I like what Francis Schaeffer said. Francis Schaeffer was a Christian apologist. Um, he's passed away. He's with the Lord now. Uh, in his book, The God Who Is There, Francis Schaeffer says this, uh, there are two purposes of Christian apologetics. The first is defense. The second is uh, to communicate Christianity in a way that any given generation can understand. Defense is proper and necessary because in every age, historic Christianity will be under attack. So Schaefer says that, that apologetics is defensive and it's also offensive. So my point four was it's defensive. We're defending against attacks on the church. Um, point five that I'm going to give here is it's offensive. I think that apologetics is helpful because it is a helpful tool for evangelism. I think it's a helpful tool for evangelism. Schaefer calls it pre-evangelism even. Um, <clears throat> he goes on to say in that same book, The God Who Is There, Schaefer says, um, Christian apologetics should never be restricted uh, to guarding against attacks should never be restricted to guarding against attacks. We have the responsibility to communicate the gospel to our generation. So yes, it's defensive. Yes, it's pre preventing attacks. It's giving credible uh, answers to attacks that come our way. But it's also offensive. It's to give, um, communicate the gospel to this next generation. Schaefer continues, apologetics should not be merely an academic subject, a newfound scholasticism. It should be, a, um, be thought out and practiced in the rough and tumble of, of living contact with the present generation. So he's saying that get out there, practice apologetics, have discussions with your neighbors, uh, with your friends, with your family, with your coworkers. It should be worked out in the rough and tumble of living contact, Schaefer says. So I think that apologetics is defensive. I think it's also offensive. It's going out. It's good for evangelism. Number six, I think that in the midst of this new... Um, term that's called exvangelical movement, this new exvangelical movement. Apologetics is needed in order to show Christians, um, as well as non Christians, that the Christian faith is credible. So there's this whole new push, this whole new movement of what they call exvangelicals, those who were in the church at one time and are now out. Maybe you know the well known YouTube guys, Rhett and Link. Um, they were with Crew. Um, youth pastors loved them. They always showed their videos. They have over 18 million YouTube followers. And Rhett and Link both left the Christian faith. They were kind of front and, front and center in the youth movements. 
Rhett and Link both deconstructed, left the faith. Josh, Joshua Harris, a pastor, uh, the guy that wrote uh, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, um, former pastor, author, he left the faith. John Steingard, um, former singer of Hawk Nelson, he is also the, an ex-evangelical. Marty Sampson, former songwriter of Hillsong, he's left the faith. Kevin Max of DC Talk, he's left the faith. Paul Maxwell, he's got a PhD in philosophy from Trinity. He was a writer for Desiring God Ministries. He's also left the faith. Abraham Piper, well-known son of John Piper, uh, left the faith. So there's this new push, this movement for ex-evangelicals. I think apologetics is important to give an answer for our kids. These guys aren't leaving the faith quietly, exiting the backstage with the lights off. No, they're leaving the faith front and center, bright light, writing books, giving, um, you, making YouTube videos, writing blogs, all these things, and they're just blasting the Christian faith. Um, they're not hostile. They're not mean. And there's tons of kids that's watching these guys, and they're listening to these things. And so we need to be prepared to answer, give an answer for our kids about why, why would Rhett and Link leave the faith? Here's some reasons they said. Now can we answer those questions? So I think apologetics is very helpful in that. Number seven, my final point, number seven, I think that Christian apologetics is needed because the Bible tells us to be prepared. As I read a while ago in 1 Peter 3.15, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, uh, as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. So the Bible tells us that we're always to be prepared to give a defense uh, for the Christian faith. So that's a kind of a little introduction to Christian apologetics. Let me just give you just a little snippet of what this um, this this show is going to be covering. We're going to cover very uh, various doctrines and, and apologetics, uh, arguments for the existence of God. We're going to talk about, and you might not, have never heard of these things, we're going to talk about the cosmological argument for God's existence, the teleological argument for God's existence, the moral argument, the argument for the resurrection, the sufficiency of Scripture, the claims of Jesus, the credibility of the Bible. I'm going to give you book recommendations throughout the time. I'm going to have discussions with friends in here that I've done uh, apologetic stuff with. Um, but all those things that we're just going to hope uh, that hopefully will equip you to be prepared to give a defense uh, for the faith that lies within you. And so it might sound like a daunting task. Don't let it scare you. Stick with me. Um, we'll put in the show notes uh, if we can. We'll, we'll put my email there. You can feel free to email me any questions you may have. And I hopefully can, uh, can help you answer some stuff, point you in the right direction, give some recommendations um, that I hope will be helpful. This is one of many podcasts and YouTube videos uh, on apologetics. There's tons of stuff out there. I'm nowhere the expert in this and would never claim to be at all. But I just hope that um, some of the stuff that I've been able to study and, and, and learn from, I can pass on to you and better equip uh, the Christian uh, to follow the Lord Jesus. Um, so let me close with this. Where is this going to be located? This can be located, you can tell your friends and family and coworkers and stuff. We're going to be on Google Podcast, uh, Amazon Podcasts or Audible. We're also going to be on Spotify as well as Apple or iTunes when it, uh, here shortly. Um, that shall come up. And also we're going to be on Denver Baptist YouTube channel. Or on, uh, uh, just search Denver Baptist on YouTube and we'll be there as well. So I hope you stick with us. Feel free to share this video out, this podcast out, and um, hope that in the future this will be engaging and will help you out to better defend the Christian faith. God bless you.